Okay, I've written a little ode to a Commodore. And uh, it's, my name's Pat McCormick. Commodore Moffat and I have been the best of friends for the better part of 50 years. And I've composed an ode to a Commodore, which I titled, Two Hands on the Wheel. And hopefully, when this ode is done, our friendship will see your 51. Okay, a couple months ago, the BCYC membership installed Steve Moffat as Commodore for one year and not a day more. He is now the captain of the good ship Bahia Corinthian. The ship will never be the same again. <laughs> Steve placed one hand on the wheel and it felt fine. The other hand was used to hold a glass of, no, no, no. The other hand was used to hold a spyglass to make sure that everything was just fine. Okay, uh, hold on, sorry. Uh, the other hand on the wheel belongs to Steve's beautiful, nautically and managerial capable wife, Lori. <clears throat> Lori's spare hand comes in handy to try to wrestle away, no, 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 tries to take away, no, occasionally borrow Steve's spyglass to ensure everything is fine. As the ship rides up and down with the gentle swell, their two hands work the wheel in opposite direction, no, in pulling in different direction, no, no, the two hands work in perfect unison to assure all is well. That's the line you wanted me to use, right, Lori? Okay, the good ship Bahia Corinthian is the envy of all the other ships in the bay. A major refit over the last year leaves her more than okay. Magnificent white sails showing and bright BCYC burgies flowing from the top of every mast. Boy, is she fast. <laughs> To keep the ship running, Captain Moffat inherited a great and loyal crew. From trimming sails to running regattas and social events, they really know what to do. Speaking of loyal crew, hear ye, hear ye. If there's any member of the crew who does not like how Captain Moffat is running this ship, stand up and let us hear. But be aware, you might be considered a mutineer. Oh, wait a second, Steve. Sorry. That was my ode to the change of command to the bounty. A few months later, it did not go so well, and Captain Bly was really mad at me. Okay, now we find the good ship Bahia Corinthian is heading south for the Panama Canal locks. So far, no one has been put in the stocks. The ship it's on its way to the Greek Isles Commodore's cruise. What have we got to lose? Captain Moffat orders a nighttime show for the crew as the Bahia Corinthian walks through. A mobile version of Showboat, the greatest show afloat. Lights are strung in the rigging, a spectacle befitting. It looks like Ernest Shackleton's ship, Endurance lit up in all of Antarctica's magnificence. Wait, no. That ship broke up and sank in the ice. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. That, that, that was from my ode to Shackleton. Okay, well, the good ship Bahia Corinthian is now headed towards the Med and Greek Isles. The crew has nothing but warm smiles. The course, sticks, the course steered takes it through the Caribbean and up the East Coast. You can almost hear the clink of glasses as the Commodore they roast. No, no, the Commodore they toast. <laughs> the ship is now transiting the North Atlantic route. It's a calm, cold, starlit night to boot. An order by Captain Moffat saying more speed was heard. A strafe transit is all but assured. The crew
crew continues to have the utmost confidence in their captain Steve. We hear there is absolutely nothing to fear. Iceberg! Steve and Lori, best of luck on your Commodore's year. We're gonna need it. introduce you our very competent, and all kidding aside, our very competent Captain Steve, Commodore Steve, and I, am I going to make it to 51 years of friendship? You know, I had some comments here that I was going to uh, start with. Uh, it, it, this was kind of sprung on me. I didn't realize that Pat was going to make some comments. He's, uh, he's been a good friend for a long time. And I suspect he still will be in the future. One of the things I'd say about Pat, one of the first times we raced Ensenada, uh, somehow or another we ended up in jail. Oh. <laughs> it totally had to do with this white bottle. No, this, it actually was beer in those days. But it, uh, he, was, he was maybe 16 years old. And we'd raced down there and uh, we got into a confrontation with the Fed rallies. And we were both thrown in jail. And when we got in there, I... You know, in those days, they wanted 20 bucks from you and you'd get out. And we didn't have 20 bucks, but I had a diver's watch and I was able to let Pat out of jail. <laughs> and I sent him off to find some friends. And eventually he found some good friends. And uh, it, it, one of the guys was named Chris Caswell, who is an international writer for sailing magazines. He was a terrific guy. The significance of this story is that over the years, every time I have sailed to Mexico, and I told my mother, who is still alive, she's 89 years old, and if I told her today, she would say, don't let Pat get you thrown in jail. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. She will never, it, it's always Pat's fault, and it, it, it just will never stop. So um, again, Pat, it, it, as he told you, he's been a good friend for a long time. And, uh, he has, we've had a lot of good times. Um, and we've been friends our entire life, it seems like. But that was not what my speech was about. <laughs> and so I'm going to go back to that for the moment. Um, what I wrote was, I'd like to thank all of you for coming to the Commodore's Ball this year. Yeah. Um, it's been wonderful. Um, I need to introduce, Pat's actually introduced himself already, but I really need to introduce uh, our table. And um, to start with, I'd like to 